Okay, so we have uh, explored the 5.1 about the load uh, monitoring uh, as a whole and 5.2 on the load uh, voltage monitoring uh, and control and also I have given one example in the 5.1 Okay. In uh, example 5.1 about the uh, the voltage variations, as you know that uh, the voltage and the frequency is two uh, parameters that we need to tightly monitor eh, in the plant, eh, especially in the uh, industrial uh, environments, eh, because uh, these two uh, parameters means frequency and the voltage is varied according to the the power, eh, according to the power. So we have two types of the power. So one is the active power and another one is the reactive power Q okay? so uh, for the voltage it is depends on the, the changes of the Q okay? the changes of the Q while uh, the frequency is much depends on the, uh, the changes or the variations of the active power which is P okay? so that's why the uh, active power that will influence the system frequency and uh, we need to make it uh, balanced. Eh? We need to make it balanced. Otherwise, we'll have the the power deviations. Eh? I, I mean, in the active power, eh? in the active power view. So, uh, how the the, the the power deviations uh, disturbs the frequency? Then we look at these uh, diagrams. Eh? This diagram show you the uh, a 50 hertz. Let's say you have a 50 hertz uh, system, and this is your system uh, frequency. And then we have the demand, demand which is uh, that the power that we consume eh, in the plant, and this is the supply. Eh, the supply. Now whether the supply is from the utility company or the supply from uh, your own generation. Eh, your own generation could be the solar, could be uh, the the diesel. Eh? So this is the supply. So when you have the uh, the balance, eh, that means the active power is balanced between the supply and the demand, then you will have the uh, system frequency as exact what we set at 50 hertz. Okay. So let's say if you have uh, demand, eh, demand more than the supply. Okay. Demand more than supply, that means you just go down here and then it will lower down your frequency. Okay same to the uh, supply if your supply is uh, more than the demands eh, more than the demand that means uh, in that case you having the uh, loads reductions eh, very rapid load reductions so that mean you your load is uh, suddenly drops eh, suddenly drops so that mean at that times uh, your supply is much more higher than your the demand so that means it will uh, push up the frequency. Okay? It will push up the frequency to a higher level. Okay, don't forget we only have plus minus one percent. Okay? One percent of the the tolerance. Okay, and uh, uh, talking about the frequency, uh, the tolerance. So basically, we have two types. So one is the so-called the operating tolerance. Okay? The operating tolerance. Uh, normally is half of the statutory yeah, the statutory uh, tolerance of the frequency so the meaning of plus minus one percent is for the statutory yeah, statutory uh, 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 requirements and while for the operating uh, frequency uh, tolerance it is about half uh, half I mean it's only allowed plus minus 0 0.5 percent Okay, that is for the operating uh, uh, tolerance, eh? operating uh, frequency tolerance. All right. So this is the example. Eh? So if we have the wind farm, eh? wind farm to support our uh, plant. Okay, you can see here. This is the frequency deviation. Eh? So that means how much is the frequency deviated change eh? has been changed. Okay? So of course, if there is no changes at 50 hertz, so we have zero here. Okay? We have zero here, so it is impossible to have the zero all the way. Okay, so our frequency, if you uh, measure it, it is always fluctuating like this one. Okay, it's always fluctuating, and then when come to the certain uh, conditions, especially when you connect, okay, connect uh, additional loads, okay? connect additional large loads, a very large load, and then it will pull down your frequency that means your frequency will experiencing uh, drops eh, drops in that particular uh, uh, moments right 
so then of course it will be adjusted eh? it will be adjusted again because our supply from TMB is depends on our demands okay uh, so that is if we are connected to the grid system okay? if you are uh, uh, isolated from the grid system that means you never tap your uh, supply from the grid system from the TMB or SESB or, or uh, what in the Sarawak uh, Sarawak is called what? Uh, SESCO, eh? Sesco. Uh, in that case you are isolated eh? in that case you are isolated that means uh, you seems like orang kampung lah, eh? so that means you plant your, your own vegetable eh? just feed to your your own uh, con consumption, eh? consumptions. So in that case, it is very dangerous. Eh? It's very dangerous because uh, once in that case, once your uh, frequency drops, then it won't go back uh, to recover like this one. Okay, because you don't have uh, additional uh, supply eh? of the power. Okay? so you just rely much on the uh, generation. I mean, your own generations. Yeah, unless your generation is very big, then you can cope for the jobs. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, it will collapse and it will make the whole uh, plant black up. Okay, so, so that is the uh, the effects of the uh, the frequency. Yeah. It's very dangerous, right? So uh, same to this one. If you are connected another supply, for example, the wind farm two yeah, in this case, and then it will uh, push up your uh, frequency eh? it will push up a little bit on your frequency and it depends on how much uh, you inject the P into your system right and uh, why the frequency is deviates so of course uh, the, uh, the first uh, factor is due to the disturbance eh? the disturbance or outage of either the generation or the loading eh? the loading is at our site and the generations is at the utility uh, utility uh, company sites right so either ones if being disturbed then you will have the frequency deviations and then another one is the uh, st uh, stochastic uh, imbalance eh? stochastic imbalance means uh, it is a randomized eh? it is a randomized imbalance uh, this is very natural it happens in our, our power system eh? it is random yeah? so this uh, occurs due to the continuous variations of the demand so of course in the plant our load is always up and down eh? up and down so that's why in that case uh, we, we call it as a, sco uh, a stochastic uh, stochastic imbalance right so another one is the deterministic uh, deterministic frequency deviation uh, so this one is not uh, in random uh, but this one is uh, a fix uh, it's a fix it is a non random uh, it is a non random that mean it has been deterministic it has been determined. It has been determined the frequency uh, variations. So this one is uh, by by nature, uh, by nature. But uh, it won't give much impact, uh, much impact on the frequency deviation as in the uh, stochastic imbalance. So another one uh, of the frequency deviation is due to the uh, if you wanted to split uh, the network. And let's say you wanted to open another uh, another plant and uh, the new plant uh, the new production plant okay? then you split you split from the uh, the original bus bar you split it into two uh, by that times you have uh, the power deviations eh? when you have the power deviation of course your frequency will be disturbed okay why to maintain the frequency eh? because uh, you look at the the motor speeds. Uh, speeds is what speeds is uh, related to the time, okay? And time it is uh, 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 one over frequency, okay? So time is one over frequency. That means whenever you have a problem in the frequency, so you will have the problems in the uh, the time related control. Right? The time related control, for example, the motor speed also might be varied, okay? 
and then the transformer losses also is much depend on the frequency especially the uh, the iron losses and the hysteresis and the eddy current losses so it is depend much on the frequency yeah? especially the eddy current losses it is a uh, square yeah? a square of the frequency and of course the protective device and yeah? you we have the protective device for example the relay so we have the circuit breaker yeah? especially the relay so uh, we have the setting and yeah? the, the, the uh, uh, a proper settings on on the relay itself okay so the setting one of the setting is the time okay so when we set the time so of course the time is measured by the system frequency that means one cycle is equal to let's say 0 0.02 in 50 hertz uh, system okay so that is the uh, the setting that mean the time setting of the protective devices just imagine your frequency now is no more 50 hertz right but it is 50.5 hertz so of course this 0.5 hertz of the frequency will give much impact on the protective devices especially the the time yeah, especially the times the magnitude is okay but the times and yeah, i mean the time how fast is the protective devices uh, react uh, uh, to our uh, effort for example okay? and another one is uh, sometimes you have the uh, synchronous motor okay? that is running on the uh, a clock eh, as like a clock because the synchronous is always must be synchronous 50 hertz means 50 hertz okay so you cannot deviate too much on that okay so if you use this kind of the devices okay uh, in your plan i mean you will uh, you will have the disturbance in the operations so same to the the rest of the uh, industrial processes eh? especially when you use the uh, the timer for example okay so your timer also depend much on the uh, the system frequency okay? so that mean the, the operation of the timer your plc for example so it much depends on the uh, the frequency okay all right so uh, in the industrial environment so we seldom uh, have the the control eh? have the control of the frequency they mean the frequency uh, regulator eh? frequency regulator is not that frequent as compared to the voltage regulator in the industry why because the industry uh, like a factory normally they just take eh? they, they mean they just take the uh, the power eh? they just take the power from the utility company eh? they don't have uh, most of the, uh, the industrial uh, consumer they don't have the uh, their own large very large uh, capacity of the uh, so-called power supply and yeah, the power supply so that's why they cannot adjust the frequency themselves okay you cannot simply adjust the frequency like the generator and yeah, like you have the generation like the TMB have the generation so let's say uh, they use the hydro eh? hydro hydro based uh, generation so they can control the frequency eh? through the the governor control eh? the governor control and uh, the generator also can uh, adjust the uh, the voltage through the exciter for example okay uh, so that is normally done in the generation uh, side eh? so for the uh, factory they seldom do it eh? they seldom do it so the only way they can do is just uh, through this so called the load shading yeah, the load shading uh, load shading is possible because load shade is uh, we shade loads that means we remove the uh, the loads especially the uh, non-critical loads yeah, non-critical loads uh, so we shade it temporarily uh, just to balance up uh, just to uh, bring down or brings uh, up again the frequency so uh, for the industrial electricity we have uh, two components uh, to consider in terms of the cost so one is the amount use and uh, the amount use that means how much is uh, uh, the power uh, the power that we consume and uh, that, that what we call it as a demand another one is the intensity of the uh, the consumption intensity that means you have uh, 
in a very short moment you have the peak demand a super peak demand okay? especially now uh, it's very near to the uh, christmas okay? everybody is uh, 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 now is uh, is a very peak demand okay? uh, what i can say is the very peak demand okay? for the factory and okay? i mean their manufacturing processes is at the peak now okay? So uh, they always having the uh, very high intensity of the consumptions in this case. So the peak demand, you know, it will have the uh, extra charge eh, by the utility company eh, as uh, high as of uh, forty five or sometimes sixty ringgit per kilowatt. Eh? That mean uh, it will uh, accumulate in one month. How many kilowatt you have uh, exceeds and eh? the 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 pre agreed uh, demands right and uh, they will charge you so that's why we need to use the load shading and yeah? load shading schemes just to uh, manage the way we use the electricity in our industry uh, environments yeah? in the industrial power system so of course number one it uh, it can reduce the peak demands so and that mean we can bring down the peak yeah, to the, the normal uh, demands for example, we can uh, reduce eh, reduce the uh, one of the production line. For example, eh, production line. Then we uh, we uh, conduct the production line during night time. Eh, during night time. So that means we try to avoid the peak demand. And another one is uh, to regulate the under frequency problems. Okay? So especially when you have a very over uh, very heavy overloads then your frequency will be under frequency and then uh, during that time you will have uh, a lot of problem eh? if we are not manage it properly so uh, the whole plan will be uh, disturbed eh? especially the blackout so the load shadings uh, see the definition is defined as the amount of loot and that must uh, almost instantly to be removed yeah, from a power system to keep the remaining portion of the system operational. Okay, so that means uh, the load shed process uh, it, it is automatically done, yeah, automatically done uh, when they sense the overload conditions. Yeah, they have the overload conditions, then uh, the load shading scheme will will be uh, activated. Yeah, will be activated. So this is uh, to avoid what? To avoid loss of the generations, yeah, especially when you have your own generation. So your generation will be lost. Okay? And the line tripping as well. Yeah, we try to avoid this and the equipment damage okay? or the chaotic uh, random shutdown of the system. Uh, it, it is not for the entire system, but just a part of the system, it might be shut down due to the overload conditions. Yeah? And uh, the common disturbance that can trigger the load shading is uh, fault. Uh, we can avoid the fault and eh, the faults. So when you have the fault, that means you uh, draw a lot of the currents and eh, the fault currents. So that means indirectly you can say that uh, your load demand is increasing and eh, is increasing. So that's why uh, it will trigger the, the load shading scheme. Another one is the severe overloaders. Uh, let's say you are you are uh, operating another uh, extended uh, extended production line. Uh, suddenly you have that, so you will have the severe overloaders. Okay? And then the loss of the generation. Uh, sometimes uh, if you have the uh, backup generations operating in parallel, for example, uh, in parallel with the TMB. So suddenly uh, you lost that generations uh, due to uh, some technical problems. So in that uh, short moment, you will experiencing the uh, under frequency yeah, because now your demand is much higher than the generations. And sometimes the switching error also could uh, trigger the load shading. Yeah, it depends on the, the switching error. So uh, for the industry, eh, having the uh, standalone generator, as I told you just now, if you don't tap your uh, power from uh, TMB or the utility company, I mean you have your own standalone generator. So the overloads may be differentiated by these two. Eh? So one is the the real power, eh, the real power shortage. Uh, 
so they mean when uh, the real power shortage they mean you will have the uh, frequency deviations and they mean you will have the under frequency problems uh, during that times uh, your uh, your standalone generator will use the prime mover talk and the prime mover talks uh, that means use the governor uh, use the governor control to control back the uh, that means to control back the uh, the frequency uh, by balancing up against the real power. And another problem is the reactive power. Uh, that means the reactive power shortage. So during that times you will experiencing the the voltage drops and uh, the voltage drops. So what is the advantages of the load shading? So of course. Uh, the significant advantage is uh, it can reduce the peak demand eh, so that we can uh, save some money eh, for the billing right and the second one of course is the uh, minimize the the blackout risk eh, due to the severe overload or the fault and uh, finally uh, it will maintain our frequency and voltage levels So when uh, the IPS is exposed to uh, disturbance, eh, that means you will have uh, two uh, major dynamic loops. Two major dynamic loops, as I told you just now. You have the excitation loops, and eh, that that they will uh, correct back your system voltage. And another one is the prime mover loops. That means it will correct back your uh, system frequency and eh? the prime mover loops is uh, related to the the governor and eh? the governor uh, control so several types of load drops eh? will drop uh, experiencing the the loads drop out if you're having the under voltage and eh? this is under voltage case okay so if you have under voltage okay because load shading also uh, will be activated uh, when you have the under voltage so uh, what will be drop out so the motor starter uh, the motor starter will be drop out uh, if the voltage uh, reach about 50 to 75 percent of its rated only that means it uh, that mean your voltage drops uh, up to 25 eh? percent that means more than 25 percent of the voltage drop that mean your motor starter will be drop out and drop out that means uh, it is out of the operations okay? so the discharge lighting also and eh? the discharge lighting so uh, discharge lighting is normally used in the production line eh? production line so it will drop out uh, whenever you have uh, voltage drop 10 to 20 eh? percent 10 to 20 percent and same to the uh, ASD eh? adjustable speed drives okay? so it will drop out uh, when you have the voltage drop uh, 10 to 20 percent okay uh, same to the uh, the thyristor base and eh? the thyristor base uh, switching element I mean you have the rectifier for example so using the thyristor then it will uh, drop out eh? again if your voltage level is dropped more than 10 percent so uh, basically we have two types of the load shading scheme so one is so called the conventional types and the conventional type is uh, we have three right? basically we have three uh, categories number one is the breaker interlock scheme so that means we use the circuit breaker to control right? to control the the loading the second one is the under frequency relay scheme so that means we use the un, uh, frequency relay yeah? frequency relay that means if you go to the uh, uh, ANSI NC uh, NC uh, format it is uh, number 81 81 of the device which is the frequency relay so we use the frequency relay to adjust the, the loading and the third one of course we can use the PLC yeah, the PLC based load shading so programmable logic control okay? and the most expensive one is the intelligence and eh? the intelligent types of the load shading or we call it as a ILS eh? intelligence so as many optimization methods eh, can be implemented in this uh, ILS eh? and uh, this is the uh, illustration of the breaker interlock scheme eh? which is the conventional one so let's say we have the uh, feeder eh? so we have feeder one until feeder and feeder here feeder one until end feeder here and 
in this case we have uh, one own generator uh, own generator so SDG uh, SDG is the steam turbine generation uh, steam turbine generation so let's say we have a steam turbine generations and uh, we try to balance up the active power when it is necessary okay? so of course uh, in these schemes uh, we are using the circuit breaker uh, circuit breaker to uh, control the loading so let's say if we have uh, we have the uh, overloads uh, we have the overloads uh, then uh, our main controller here will uh, detect they uh, will detect uh, there is an uh, overload okay? then we can use the priority so of course before we can uh, switch off uh, either one of the uh, feeder here so we need to do the planning the well planning i mean we need to categorize the loading according to the, the priority so of course the first priority of the loading is uh, we cannot touch it i mean we cannot we totally cannot touch it i mean we totally cannot switch off the load say eh? because that load is very critical so that mean when we switch off that critical loads uh, the whole plant eh, will uh, experiencing a lot of the losses in term of the money eh? in term of money so that's why uh, we need to prioritize our loading first okay eh? so we only can shade uh, the uh, so-called the not important loads and well, not important load or we call it as a non-critical loads and eh? non-critical loads or uh, uh, another another name is uh, what uh, interruptible loads eh? interruptible loads uh, so only interruptible load or non-critical load then we can shake eh? and then we can uh, use the the controller to uh, switch off which one of the circuit breaker and eh? we wanted to so the drawbacks of the this uh, breaker interlock scheme is it is very difficult to change the load priority so that means if we have uh, some new load coming in that means we try we we need to uh, rearrange and uh, the priority that mean load priority it is very difficult uh, because everything is in the hard wire uh, hard wire so they mean just imagine you ha when you have the hard wire so you need to uh, <coughs> that means unscrew it and and you have to uh, rewired it again it's very troublesome so it is only one stage of the load shading so it's only one stage only load shading so uh, the often result in the shading more loads than necessary I mean it always happens it always happens uh, we overshade I mean we overshade the loads And uh, the operation of these types of the load shading scheme eh, will most likely shut the entire industrial facility eh, down in the non-orderly manner. Yeah, so it is due to the, some technical uh, uh, problem in our breaker, for example. Okay? So it, it might be happen this. Okay, and then uh, restarting, eh, restarting, and. Uh, the delay eh, because uh, our circuit breaker is not only control for the the main eh, but it's control uh, among the the feeders eh. we have a lot of feeders to be controlled so that mean if we shut down one feeder so we need to restart it again so it takes some time eh, to do that so for the under frequency relay so that means uh, the second uh, method is we use the frequency relay yeah, frequency relay is indicated here 80 81 in uh, nc uh, ansi skip yeah, 81 so 81 is the frequency relay so we will use this relay to detect whether we have the under frequency or over frequency okay? in this case uh, we are detecting the under frequency okay so under frequency whenever we have the overloaded okay? i mean demand more than the supply Okay, demand more than the supply. So, for example, here eh, uh, we have this illustration here. So, in this uh, system, we are operating at 60 hertz eh, frequent uh, system. And then, uh, if what happened at zero, eh, the time of zero here, what happens here? So, uh, our circuit breaker will try to clear the fault here. Eh, try to clear the fault here. And then 
our AD1, AD1 which is the uh, frequency relay, will only pick up the signal at here. Okay, just imagine how many uh, seconds already here. Okay, so uh, cycle, okay, this is uh, calculated in the cycle. So uh, it, it takes about 15 cycles, okay, 15 cycles just to pick up the signal. That means it just sends the uh, under frequency. Uh, under frequency like this one, uh, it goes to 85, uh, 58.5 here, uh, 58.5 here. So our 81 or the frequency really just pick up, and then it needs sometimes also uh, it needs uh, about 15 cycles, extra 15 cycles, just to initiate the the load shadings. And uh, that mean which one we wanted to uh, shut down. So, uh, so that mean all in here we are. Uh, taking some time uh, to operate it, and that's it. that is the uh, the weakness of this uh, of frequency relay scheme. Okay. So let's say uh, it is operated like like this one. You have the stage one, and stage two. Okay. Let's say the stage one, the frequency uh, drop from sixty to fifty eight point five, for example. Okay. So it will delay a little bit, zero point two five. Okay, then uh, this is amount of the the load that we are going to shift. Uh, so in this case, is ten megawatts, and if we come to the more severe conditions, stage two, which is uh, our frequency is further down to fifty seven point five, that means we need uh, extra delay, uh, two seconds, just to shift another thirty uh, megawatt of the uh, load. Okay. That's why if uh, the stage 1 of the load shading is not successful, that means it will go to the stage 2. That means the uh, most uh, load will be shaded in stage 2. Okay. So the drawbacks, of course, uh, very obvious, it is very slow. Eh? It is very slow in the response times. Okay. And uh, sometimes incorrect loads may be drops eh, because of the undesirable blackouts also. So the analysis knowledge is lost. That means uh, uh, since this is not the intelligence, so intelligence normally you will have the uh, data logger. Eh, they will lock the history. They will lock of the history. That means it, uh, the intelligent one will learn from the history. Uh, that is so called the, uh, the knowledge, eh, analysis knowledge. So but in this case, uh, it is not the analysis knowledge. Uh, we, we, we don't have the uh, the history of the knowledge uh, about these uh, uh, systems problems, uh, under frequency problems. So that's why uh, analysis knowledge is lost uh, if we are using the this scheme. Uh, so the basic procedure uh, for the designing under frequency load shading scheme is of course we need to know the maximum anticipated overloads so how much is the maximum overloads and then number of the load shading stages so how many stage so how many uh, shading level that we have okay? and then the size of the uh, each shading okay? so how how much is the size of the loads uh, for each stage and then the frequency uh, frequency setting also. So that means in stage one, when we slash, then it will improve how many percent of the frequency, for example, and the time delay as well. So the location of the frequency relays also plays an important role. Uh, so these are some of the uh, example. And this is examples. So it trips uh, load number one, trip load number two. Okay. So when you have the uh, under frequency, okay, we have the under frequency. In this case, it is uh, 60 hertz. Okay. It's operating at 60 hertz. So if uh, our frequency is drops 0 0.5, for example, up to 59.5, and uh, I mean this one will be activated. Okay. So this is the uh, end gate. This is the uh, OR gate. Okay. So end gate will activate it, and then uh, if we, uh, the frequency is. Uh, go down further to 59.1 and then this one will be activated okay so either one of this one activated then it will slash or shade the the load one okay same to this and uh, this is the another stage okay so if uh, our system is uh, having 
uh, over over frequency. That means uh, the our frequency is increasing up to sixty point five. Uh, that means it will restore the load one. Okay, yeah? it will restore the load two as well. Okay. Uh, so this is how they uh, do the the shading schematic. So in in the uh, equations formats so the PD and yeah, the total load to be sheet this is according to this uh, this is a, a basics uh, free, uh, the equations of the load shading normally we will use this one and yeah. this is the frequency and uh, the existing frequency so how much is the frequency drops so let's say uh, F not F not is the uh, system frequency yeah, system frequency so let's say 50 or uh, 60 Hertz yeah, 50 or 60 Hertz this is the nominal frequency and this is the frequency variations okay uh, so how much is the frequency vari uh, uh, variations yeah. and then del p del p is the relative overload yeah, the relative overload right so uh, how much is the relative overload in per units normally yeah, in the per unit and then load reduction factor uh, d so this is the D load reduction factor. So it control amount of the uh, reductions, uh, amount of the load reductions. So let, let, let's say uh, if you have D is equal to 1, uh, so that means you shade less uh, loads uh, for one stage as compared to if you have D is equal to 1.5. Okay, so D 1.5, you shade more loads. Uh, that's why you have the load reduction factors. And uh, normally we'll use this one. So I give you one example here, example uh, 5.2. So we try to investigate the uh, relative overloads, uh, del P. So how much is the del P to be sheets in kilowatt okay, based on the, uh, the data here. Okay, we have the load reduction factor 1.5, uh, frequency tolerance plus minus 1.5%. Okay, this is the frequency tolerance. And our base apparent power S, okay, this is the S, is 1.5 MVA. Okay. So the overall power factor is 0.85. Okay. Overall power factor is 0.85. So we need to know okay, what is the del P in this case. Okay. So we use the uh, this uh, formula. We use this formula, okay. and then we put it 59.1. Uh, Let's say. Uh, in the case of lower tolerance and eh, minus 1.5 percent so if minus 1.5 percent uh, from 60 hertz it is dropped up to 59.1 percent eh, 59.1 percent so that's why the f now is 59.1 percent okay so they put in everything here eh, including the d and uh, f naught is 60 so at the end we will have the del p is 0 0.023 per unit okay so in order to get the uh, get it in the real uh, units eh, in kilowatts, so that means we need to multiply eh, with the uh, the base just now. And the base is one point five MVA or one thousand five hundred kVA, and multiply with the power factor, okay? because P is equal to the S cos theta. Okay? P is equal to S cos theta. So this is the S and cos theta. So in this case, when our frequency is dropped uh, one point five percent, that mean uh, the amount of the uh, load that we need to shape is twenty nine point three three kilowatts. Okay. So another case is for the higher tolerance, uh, plus one point five. That means this is over frequency. Okay. Over frequency sixty point nine percent, sixty point nine hertz. Okay. So sixty point nine hertz. So in this case. Uh, the del p is now in the negative eh, in the negative so negative that means we are not going to shape but we need to restore again eh, restore the uh, uh the loads eh, restore again the loads so how much we need to restore is 28.04 kilowatt in this case okay uh, another one the programmable logic control base uh, load shading so this is uh, more to the PLC eh, using the ladder diagrams eh, to control the uh, the frequency deviations. Eh? You use the ladder diagram to uh, control the frequency deviations in this case. 
so it is more or less about the uh, the circuit breaker as well as the the frequency relay okay? frequency relay concepts but it only used the uh, different device called the PLC so that's why it, the, uh, it is also a static sequence. It's the static sequence. I mean, it just depends on our programs, eh? the pre-programs. So it's just by logic. It is not adaptive. Eh? The adaptive one is this one, uh, intelligent load shading. Uh, so this is adaptive, adapt to the situations, eh? the real situations. So uh, the ILS system is then to improve the response time so of course it's much faster than the previous uh, three methods and uh, the uh, conventional methods so it is more accurate and much more accurate yeah. and then of course it is very fast yeah. it's very fast and reliable so uh, the ILS the intelligent load shadings uh, need a training knowledge base training knowledge base means uh, it will uh, train itself yeah. by using the history data and yeah. I mean all the time the, uh, this system will uh, capture and uh, capture the the data and record it uh, in the data logger so that means every times of the uh, uh, the problem happen then it will trace back the history and yeah. it will trace back the history and train themselves let's say you are using the artificial neural network a and N. so it need the training eh? so it train through the history so that it can uh, uh, converge uh, better and uh, much better that means it can make the decision much faster and uh, better and reliable okay? uh, so this is the difference eh, between the intelligent load shading and the previous conventional one so of course the dynamic responses and eh? the dynamic responses mean increase the frequency and the voltage variations uh, among of the output of the knowledge base so that means uh, these two parameters are very very important eh, to be recorded as the training knowledge base <coughs> uh, so this is uh, the illustrations of the ILS okay? As if so they have a, a, a multiple uh, controller uh, multiple controller to just to shape the uh, certain amount of the loads here and you will have the uh, system data yeah, system data and of course they need a server yeah, to store the uh, data remotely yeah, remotely and you, you have the system the disturbance for example here okay? so uh, that one this one is just the output and yeah, this one is the the, uh, the the parameter that mean the frequency and the voltage variation storage here okay so this is the uh, uh, they mean the comparison eh? the comparison the blue one is the uh, the previous one and the previous one they say we are using the uh, frequency relay yeah? frequency relay so this is the response times the yeah? response time so they need uh, <coughs> up to 50 cycles here <coughs> just to recover back to uh, 60 Hertz but if you look at the ILS in the red color so it detect here and then start, it will uh, have a very uh, good dynamic response and very quickly it can restore the frequency yeah very quickly it is uh, less than 50 cycle uh, less than 50 cycle then our frequency the system frequency will be restored again okay? so same to this one and this is the loading uh, so they how they shape the load uh, they shape the load very fast you see from here once they detected the uh, under frequency here then it uh, very fast it uh, it will shape the loads uh, shape the load very fast here uh, as compared to this one as compared to the blue one so up to the cycle 30 here they only shape the first stage of the load <coughs> if if it is not successfully uh, uh, let me push up the frequency then when you go to the next stage yeah that means take some time on this yeah. it's not like the uh, straight <coughs> straight away they can shit the certain amount of the load
Okay, this is the uh, logic flow, eh? logic flow chart of the expert system. Uh, expert system is one of the uh, artificial intelligence. The artificial intelligence system is normally used in the uh, load shading. Eh? Okay. Uh, I think that's all for the uh, chapter 5. So, <coughs> thank you very much.